Here to, to react to that, Representative Brad Wenstrup, Republican from Ohio, member of the House Intelligence Committee, and a physician, also an Iraq War vet himself. Congressman, thank you so much for being here this morning. We appreciate it. So what is the feel on Capitol Hill uh, about what should happen next? Uh, it's got to pass the House and the Senate. The president clear about what he wants. What should happen? Yeah, I think there are definitely some things that we want to do further. We've done three phases of, of assistance to the American people and to the whole fight against this pandemic as it is. Uh, in many ways, I want to see the first three phases roll out successfully and see where we are with that. But there's no doubt about it. For example, with the uh, Paycheck Protection Program, we want to get more to it. The president has asked for that, and we want to do that. You know, it's been a little challenging, obviously, most because we're all working from afar, but we are working and we're trying to get something done. So we'll be glad to work with the administration and do what's best for the American people to get through this and then get our country back back on track. What What's most likely to pass? I mean, Nancy Pelosi has been obstinate. She's tried to put things into the bill that have nothing to do with recovery. Um, what, you know, when it comes to a payroll tax holiday, and when it comes to infrastructure, when it comes to staying focused on small business, can that happen? Uh, do you have good faith partners on the Democrat side right now? Well, that's the challenge, right? Because I don't think we really did, especially in phase three of this whole process, because they were holding things out, delaying the whole process just for a few items. I mean, nothing's more glaring than the 25 million that went to the Kennedy Center. And I said, unless the Kennedy Center is being set up as a makeshift hospital for coronavirus, this has no play here. But uh, I think that Ms. Pelosi will try to get things in and we'll we'll see if we can stop her i hope we can because there are things that we have to get done in order to get through this the president understands that so hopefully we won't see further delays from Ms. pelosi let's stick to what the problem is at hand and get aid into the hands of the american people yeah. and so that small businesses as you mentioned can maintain themselves not lose employees that's the key we mm -hmm. want them to be able to pay their Con bills, don't lose employees, and drive on. Yeah, Congressman, you talk about problems. Let me take you to a little bit of a different one, and that is the World Health Organization. Dr. Tedros waits until March 11th to declare it a world pandemic, after which 4,291 people have already died. There's 118,000 cases in 114 countries. He even has the gall to pan President Trump, who earlier in February stopped flights from China, which we now know has count uh, saved countless lives. Is it time to cut funding to WHO? Well, I think the president is doing the right thing in talking about that. The World Health Organization is to be there to be transparent so that we have facts and we know what is going on. I served on our Board of Health in Cincinnati. You cannot proceed with taking care of health care issues if you don't have the facts. If you're twisting the facts, if you're in denial about what's going on, that's a problem. And what's curious, I and some of my medical colleagues have done a lot of research on everything that's taken place, what's being done in China. If you look at the medical research, you can tell that they knew something big was going on earlier than they've ever admitted to. So on the medical side, it seems that there was some transparency, but on the political side and on the government side, obviously not. And there seems to be connections trying to play this down. You know, you saw the World Health Organization actually speak out at one point and say they didn't want a travel ban. Why would you do that? The numbers, you know, have to be real. You have to know exactly what's going on if, if the United States and the rest of the world are going to respond appropriately. So from here on out, I think, you know, we're acting on our own. We got to get through this pandemic ourselves yeah. and our medical community along with our our government is doing a great job i think of that but boy this could have been a whole lot worse had the president not acted mm. and i think that the who has a lot of explaining to do and i know that this president will press on that and we as members of congress should too absolutely it's got to be an open and honest transparent uh, situation or we're going to fail yeah i mean the american people deserve you know honest and transparent all of those things that you mentioned let's talk about plasma right now because we know blood banks are pleading mm. that they need those plasma donations the fda backs the effort to develop develop COVID-19 treatment from the plasma of recovered patients. We were talking to one of our medical doctors, Dr. Nicole Sapphire, earlier this morning about how important the plasma is going to be in addition to those antibody tests. So where are we with that right now? Well, I think it's moving right along. The bottom line is we're going to need donors, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Dr. Sapphire, by the way, did a phenomenal job explaining that today. This is one way of finding out if people had the virus and got better. So that can be peace of mind for them. They can return to the workforce.
But I, I do have to say that it's important that we reach out to our physicians. And this is one of the things we're doing, trying to do through public service announcements. Our physicians that are treating COVID patients have to be aware of where patients are in the process that would make them eligible to be good donors. And people that think they've had it or know they have had it need to be able to reach out to their blood bank through their physician and go and have the plasma donated. This is a huge thing. I can tell you three weeks ago, talking to my medical colleagues, saying if we had 55 gallon drums full of IgG, that's the antibody that you need, we could save a lot of people. And what yeah. we really want to do is make sure we can get to people before they need a ventilator. And I think a lot of people would step up and want to donate their plasma if they know that they were able to. That's America, right? America steps up to problems. Our people are great and they just need to have the awareness. So thank you for pushing it out this morning and we're gonna to continue to push it out because it's extremely important if we're gonna proceed and we'll save a lot of lives with this as well, I'm convinced. Yeah. Good stuff. All right, Congressman, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you sir. Yeah, my pleasure. God have a bless. good morning, happy Easter. You too. You too. Happy Easter. You too.